Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV. I'm Dino, your host. Glad to see you here. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about how an enclosed converted cargo trailer can possibly be the best, the most lightweight, the most inexpensive and flexible trailer that you could tow with your rig. We'll talk about that plus a couple extra tips, so stick around. Okay, we're gonna have a look at another trailer, only this time it's a cargo trailer that's converted into a travel trailer hybrid sort of thing. Why don't we let Joel of Joel Trombley, the YouTube channel, talk about it. Hey Joel, thanks for being part of the video. Why don't no you problem. tell us what you did? Yeah, so this is a five by eight uh, cargo trailer. I converted it last year and um, kind of very multi-purpose. That was the main goal with it, is that I wanted it to not just be a camper trailer, uh, because I've owned camper trails before and six months of the year uh, they're not being used so um, I do a lot of outdoor activities and I figured okay I'm gonna do something that I can use in the winter, the spring, summer, uh, and the fall. Um, so this is kind of my ice shack in the winter, it's my hunt camp in the fall uh, and then in the summer and spring and stuff I go camping with it. Um, you know I don't know yeah. if people heard you, you yeah. said ice shack. Yes, yeah so in the winter I pull this thing on the lake with my truck uh, and I have um, essentially put uh, holes in the floor here for ice fishing. <laughs> and I got, oh my goodness. I got, oh yeah, I got cold. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and then uh, there's a diesel heater on board uh, with a 100 amp hour lithium battery by CanBat. Uh, and then I have a 180 watt solar panel on the ceiling, so everything's off grid, no generator or anything. Wow, this is yeah. so clean in here. Thanks. And everything, like your uh, diesel heater, it's all in the cupboards. And yep. Yeah. So the vent is underneath here. Okay. You can see it down below. We got some bags and yeah. chairs and stuff. Just so you can store things under this bench. Yep. Yep. And it folds out into place. So in the fall. Uh, you know, I have enough room to put a small quad back here. Oh, you're kidding. So it's kidding. like a mini toy hauler. Um, and then, you know, once you get to camp, you take everything out and then it's your, you know, living quarters. And uh, then yeah. this is a bench right now. And does a table come off that wall? Yes. There? So for the line of work I do and stuff too, I kind of wanted to be a mobile, you know, remote working surface. And so I set up my laptop here and uh, I usually end up having uh, my cell phone booster going through the window on the roof um, and this has been really comfortable to uh, work at. Um, this was actually, so this entire project, like this chuck box, uh, you can find it online. Uh, this was my thesis project for my Masters of Architecture and uh, really the YouTube channel that I created uh, starting with this project was kind of a record um, showing the build because I was completing school online because of the pandemic and everything. Yeah. Um, so I needed to, <laughs> in a way, to show my colleagues and professors that I was actually doing something. And, you know, they didn't really believe me that I was physically building something. So, <laughs> yeah, this is it. Uh, I recently put in the, a RAM mount for an iPad, and that was nice. We watched a movie last night. Right on. Yeah. And in the cupboards are storage for other items? like. Yeah, yeah so we just got two uh, general kind of storage there, and then, uh, behind the main panel here. You know what, let's just get right in. I can show you how everything kind of collapses. Sorry, that was loud. So I have uh, spring-loaded gate latches essentially holding the bed in the upright position. Right, okay. uh, And then locking uh, hinges for the legs. And then, yeah, so it's here, there's just some simple storage. Um, and then behind here, Oh, wow! Yeah. <laughs> so, That's yeah. incredible. You got a lithium battery there. Yeah, yeah. This is the kind of. It's it's funny because all the money and hard work goes into you know behind the scenes, and then you just hide it, right? Yeah. But that's this funny. is like the brains. This is the the heart of the entire project. Um, yeah, I have a lithium battery, a 3,000 watt uh, inverter uh, converter charger, so I can plug it in and automatically. If I short power, it can uh, recharge my battery. Yeah. Uh, but then I also have a 30 watt or 30 amp solar charge controller with a, a solar panel on the roof, um, and that kind of all runs there and keeps it nice and happy. 
And then um, the diesel heater, you know, the little unit down there, you can see. I think I, I saw yeah. your video when you were installing that. Yeah, yeah, and I've had some issues with it, but uh, it seems like once you kind of take it apart once and learn how it works, it's a simple system, um, you know, it, it, it works pretty good. You know, I'm looking at your electrical work, and I've seen yeah. other videos with electrical work. I've never seen anybody's look this good. Thank you. That is yeah. brilliant. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm proud of it. It's, uh, you know, it was kind of my first, like, real electrical job. Yeah. And uh, I made sure to do everything properly, everything, you know, with the, the running the lights, uh, you know, everything has channels and it's, it's properly, um, you know, kind of fastened and put away neatly. And I just noticed yeah. the fan. What kind of fan is that? Yeah. Uh, so this is a knockoff of the Max Airflow fan. Yeah. I, I can't remember the actual term. Uh, same thing, you know, on Amazon and it's, uh, it's got like a big, I don't know, like 300 millimeter fan here with a uh, in three speeds and out three speeds. Okay. Um, and with the window open here, uh, this thing has been really comfortable. That fan will push or pull air and it, it absolutely, for this small space, it makes it really comfortable. Excellent. Yeah. Can you show me how this becomes a bed? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so yeah, so this is kind of the main bench and this one's a slightly shallower than this one here you can see. Okay. Um, and I, I did that on purpose because uh, I wanted, if you're sitting here ice fishing, uh, so I'm in architecture and ergonomics and stuff is something like that is very important and uh, you don't want something, a bench that's too long because then you don't have enough room to have a backrest. So I wanted the wall to be your backrest and essentially this bench here is designed to be a comfortable bench length essentially. And so, you know, that's comfortable to sit at. Excellent. And you got room for your ice fishing holes there. Exactly. Yeah. And then uh, if you are, let's say, solo camping, because I've gone solo before, um, sometimes I won't put the whole bed down. I'll just put this half down, the other half, uh, which is slightly wider. It's a nice, like, twin size. Mm -hmm. uh, but once this half comes down, it becomes a full queen size bed. Simply set up like that, quick and easy. And now you have a nice queen size bed, so in the winter time it's heated in here. Yep. And then in the summer months you've got the fan moving the air in here, making it exactly. nice and comfortable. Yeah. That's beautiful. Okay, let's have a look outside here. Yeah. And the door here is quite interesting too. Uh, same story, right? Trying to make something multifunctional. Uh, and the reason why. I called this the truck box. I don't know if you're familiar with yeah, the truck box, yeah, right? Yeah. Like the, the camp kitchen, the box. It has to be uh, lightweight and be able to compact so you can carry it wherever you're going. Uh, but I was really fascinated and interested in how each surface is uh, maximized to become uh, a utility. And so, you know, like simple things, just being able to store everything away. Uh, but how can a surface become, you know, a work surface, but uh, not always be in the way example. So uh, that's that there. And simply just all kind of closes away like that. Excellent. Um, the fenders were, uh, I think there's a better angle on this thing. <coughs> so I've got 31 inch tires here with uh, Alcoa rims and they match, they're a matching set of my truck which is not here uh, but essentially the idea was uh, thinking about redundancy you know when you're going out off grid uh, out in the hinterland you want to have redundancy so I have a spare that can work on the truck for a tire blow or on the trailer um, because I did install larger tires I had to uh, custom fabricate fenders and these things are absolutely bomb proof they're bed liner and um, I use them to access the roof, set up the awning and whatnot, and these, I have absolutely no, no, no hesitation stepping on them, and uh, they're great. I do have plans to put some gear, you know, a jerry can and my spare tire uh, mounted on this thing. Um, and the front here, this is kind of the, this is kind of like where I have the diesel set up, so uh, I have a, Uh, you can see the diesel fuel tank here. Yep. And then essentially that's plumbed through my, it goes through a fuel filter 
and then the fuel pump. Okay. And then back down into the unit itself. Right. Uh, underneath the trailer. And then there's the exhaust that comes out the side there. So that's all kind of hidden and easy to work on, uh, out of the way. And then if you know something about diesel heaters, you know, there's something that people say is like the, the pump is really annoying because it has it clicking. So having it outside, out of the way, it's out of mind and you don't have to listen to it. Brilliant. And this is like uh, the piece de resistance, the sonic, Yeah, so eh? this was uh, a long time coming. I actually just put this on like three days ago and my channel hasn't seen it yet, so I do have to do a video on this. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is the... Uh, this is the OVS, Overland Vehicle Systems, uh, 270 degree awning. Uh, this is the one that has the extra front bit. Um, right. And I got this through uh, Off-Road Rehab, which is actually here at the event. And James, absolutely awesome guy, got me this in like less than a week and then I installed it three days ago. Um, and I'm still, still kind of a learning process, but you can, uh, the legs, are not really required, so it is a self-supporting awning. Oh, oh. Um, so everything kind of gets tucked away. So that just gives you more stability in the wind, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then I've kind of, in the rain that we just had like an hour ago, uh, pulled down some low spots so I could have water water runoff. Um, this thing takes like 30 seconds to set up, which is brilliant. It's awesome. Uh, getting out and going camping and stuff is valuable time so you want to reduce your setup time really you know being able to put up quick and take down quick because you know you're spending you don't you don't want to spend your time setting up you know yeah. That's, uh, yeah that's the that's, that's the truck box yeah okay joel i really appreciate that this hey. is an amazing job i've seen your youtube channel i'll put a link on the screen hey, during this episode it. and thanks for showing us around yeah right on cheers so a special shout out to Joel from the Joel Tremblay YouTube channel. Thank you so much for giving us that tour. It was great meeting you. And if any of you out there want some extra details on his build, please feel free to check out his YouTube channel and I'll have a link in the description section below. But now let's talk about some tips. Now for some cheaper, jeeper tips. In this tip segment, I think the phrase less is more really comes into play here. If you have a look at Joel's trailer, it's only 5 by 8 but it still gave him plenty of space to do what he needed to do. If you have a trailer that's only 5 feet wide, you won't need special mirrors on your rig and you'll be able to drive safely just with the mirrors you have to see past the rig. It'll also be lighter weight if you don't go for a full height trailer because maybe 5 feet will be ample enough space as in Joel's to do what you need to do then you could fit that trailer in your garage. Also, you'll have less surface area because we discussed in our video, the things to know before you tow, that the surface of the trailer comes into play as well. You'll have better fuel efficiency and with the price of fuel these days, any little bit helps. Hey, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. I hope that you found it helpful and if you did, how about giving the video a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel, please feel free to click on the subscribe button right here and the alert bell so you don't miss the next upcoming episode. So thank you all for watching and we'll see you next week. Until then, be well, stay safe, take care.